The patch is finally out, and while there are only a few changes, they look incredibly impactful. Up first is Omega Red. I have long held that it is an actual crime against humanity when you look at Omega Red and then you look at Miss Marvel and you just look at how completely bad Omega Red is compared to the Miss Marvel Season Pass card. However, now Omega Red looks like he might actually have a legitimate role, an exciting role, as a smaller Miss Marvel with a theoretically easier to hit condition that can also be run alongside her to create a lot of spread power across multiple lanes. The new Omega Red has the same stats as the old Omega Red, however, he will be getting a new ability. Where the old Omega Red said if you are winning this lane by 10, give plus 4 to your other locations, this Omega Red says if you are winning this lane at all, give plus three to your other locations, and as a four drop, this is instantly in contention for slots in Zabu decks. I'm actually pretty excited to see what this guy does. Obviously, it's sucked dramatically for an extremely long time. This is a card that was a joke even in the beta. I remember there was a streamer named Talkwin who was like, I finally made a good Omega Red deck, and we laughed at him, and we were right because it wasn't very good because Omega Red was bad. Omega Red now is a legitimate, like, that's kind of a 411, which means it's kind of a 311 with Zabu, and, like, that is the range that a 4-drop has to be to be playable. When you look at the four drops that are played currently, there's stuff like Sentry, Conditional 420, there's like Conditional 412s like Dark Hawk, and there's another Conditional 412 in the form of, say, Werewolf by Night, there is Miss Marvel, who's a Conditional 414. So this as a Conditional 411, but it's like a good 411, is pretty compelling to me, and I think that this creates some really interesting minigames. One downside I think this card may have is that it does seem very difficult to play around. You kind of are in a situation where if they're playing it late in the game, you're just like, oh, geez, I hope that goes to the lane that I'm actually able to contest here. And I do think it adds some dynamism to decks that are just sort of able to create lanes that are relatively uncontestable. I think this is a really exciting card now. I think it's on the borderline of playable. I'm definitely going to be trying it in my Zabu decks one location that I'm pretty interested in with this card specifically, not location, but situation, is I wonder if there's something there for Living Tribunal. And obviously, I don't think it makes the world's most sense, but there's a world where this guy ends up as a comparable card to Miss Marvel in Living Tribunal. I just think because it's only plus three, multiplying three is a lot worse than multiplying five. Tribunal is able to jump through those hoops more often than not. but Tribunal definitely is a deck where there is just one lane that you are way ahead in, and then you have this ability to, like, go elsewhere with it. I don't think it's going to be particularly relevant. However, there is something in me that's like, okay, well, if I have, like, an Onslaught Iron Man lane and I don't draw Tribunal, I can slap this guy down there and be like, oh, well, that's just, like, you know, 12 free power. That's not 12. It'll be, like, 6 free power on each lane, so it's 12 total. But it's like, you know, that's almost something that makes sense. I think the three is just too low for how he fits in that deck, but overall, I'm excited to see how he competes with other four drops. I do expect him to add some dynamism to the way games end by forcing people to contest lanes that they otherwise would not be contesting, and I do expect him to be an exciting and interesting card, which is more than we have had from Omega Red in uh, forever. Next up is a personal blow to me specifically. Beast going back to a 2-2, but losing the permanent cost reduction is so harmful to me and all the stupid bounce decks that I love to play. This is a, I think, significant hit to what Beast can do. Having that unconditional cost reduction is extremely powerful. Just on a basic level, being able to get that stuff for free again after Falconing is one of the key power plays in the bounce deck as currently constructed. One thing this might do is push Beast bounce decks towards more being a Black Swan kind of list. And now that Beast is no longer doing all of this stuff that Black Swan does for free, I think Black Swan makes a lot more sense as a bounce card. Something along the lines of Beasting, and then on that, that being your turn four, and your turn five is like Falcon Black Swan, will enable you to get the same feeling as those old bounce decks with Beast. However, I 
do think that this is going to be a significant nerf to bounce no matter how you slice it. Like, we are going to get worse. And while the card is getting a little bit more playable, you know, 2 is a bit better than a 3-4, I do think that that is a big, big drop-off. And now I feel as though I may be required to run Black Swan, which hurts a lot. Beast was the key card to all of these decks, and it remains probably a key card to all of these bounce decks, but geez, this is a significant hit to it, and I am definitely pretty upset about it. Like, this is this is my boy. Blue Frazier is my boy, and I, I have been playing Beast since the beta. I don't know if you guys are aware of this. I actually got my start doing content, writing up a paste bin guide to the original bounce deck in Marvel Snap. Like, this is something that has been uh, a card that I have played for as long as I have played this game. That was the first piece of content I wrote, was a Beast Bounce Guide, and now I'm still playing Beast Bounce. I'm recording this just after a stream where I played a ton of Beast Bounce, so obviously I'm upset about this. I'm already looking to the future, though, because it's not like I'm going to stop playing that kind of stuff. How do I make it better? And I think the first stop for making it good again is Black Swan. I am interested in that. That should enable a lot of what I was already doing to make sense still. I do think that this undeniably sucks, though. Like, bounce decks are going to get significantly worse. This is a significant hit to any deck that was seriously playing Beast. And I struggle to think of a situation where this is an actual buff outside of, I don't know, Cerebro 2, which is not really a thing that would ever play this. but. That is the only situation I can think of this as an actual buff. I feel like this is a significant nerf to this archetype, and I think that is fundamentally, from a balance perspective, not necessarily warranted. But from a design space perspective, I'm willing to hear it out. Because one drops in Marvel Snap are pretty consistently terrible, and Black Swan is running into this problem as we speak. This is a card that it's like, okay, well, my one drops that I'm getting off of this, I'm not doing anything cool with them and Beast recycling them was already doing better than what Black Swan did in most decks that played her. Now, of course, that's not true. But one-drops only tend to be good when you are recycling them for extra value or annihilating your hood over to your opponent's side of the board because you need your cards to be able to impact the board, and one-drops tend to get invalidated very easily. Now, Beast and Falcon end up being the way these cards end up being good is because you can reuse their cheap effects. That's what makes one drops playable. Without those as a dominant method of, you know, making one drops good, they are able to do more with the design space of one drops. I get that. However, I don't think they actually are going to be able to do a lot more with the design space of one drops because A, this stuff still sort of exists, and B, I find it hard to believe that you're going to be able to print a one drop that is somehow better than like me recycling the hood twice. I just, I don't think you can make a one drop that is better than that that doesn't synergize with Beast and Falcon in and of itself. And so I guess I can understand toning this down as a way to allow you to make more one drops. But right now, I think one drops like genuinely do need the help, and they are only really playable in this context. So I don't really like this nerf too much. However, I totally understand why they did it. I get it. I just worry that it won't accomplish the goal that they want it to accomplish. Okay, people are going to laugh at me for this, but I think this change might actually matter. We just learned from Loki that getting the cards out of your opponent's deck is actually good. And with Helicarrier now, I kind of wonder if, obviously, you know, it's not getting the cards out of your opponent's deck, but a full grip of random cards with you playing, like, Collector and Quinjet is actually weirdly compelling to me. Like, I, maybe I just have terminal Loki brain, but something feels like, hey, wait, do you guys remember when Collector got, like, just seven power randomly? We could do that again. And, like, you could do something along the lines of, you know, Lady Sif Ghost Rider in your collector deck or something like that, and that should hit this card every single time if as long as you're not running any other six drops, as long as you make it work, and it doesn't seem that hard to make work. And I am just, I, again, it might just be my terminal Loki brain talking, but part of me is like, wait, isn't this actually kind of good? If you can pull this off, isn't this actually just like, oh man, my collector is a 2-7, and I have a Quinjet, and I'm getting a bunch of free stuff, and like, is that... Is that legit? Because it does sort of feel like a card that 
should be a joke, right? Like I, I think of myself taking Helicarrier seriously and I'm like, what are, why, what, why would I ever take this card seriously? It's Helicarrier, come on. It's like famously a joke. It's like a running gag. And yet, now that it does this with the collector, it like I feel like it actually can do some stuff. If you can make, like we've seen how strong it is to make your two drop into like a two eight. That's like the biggest thing on earth. And that is something that this card can readily accomplish now. I don't exactly know if it goes into anything ready-made. I know that there was the Jim Dickens deck that was using Meek and Helicarrier and Modoc to discard excessive amounts of cards. And that is a buff to the, that deck, but I, I don't really think that deck was particularly close to, you know, competitive viability. It was a deck that people played because you could play Meek in it and there were weekend missions. And that's valid too. I just think that like this card went from being totally unplayable to being probably unplayable. And I know that sounds like not a big jump, but what I mean by that is this card went from like a one out of 10 to like a six out of 10. So it's actually a very big jump. It's just, you know, six out of 10s aren't really what make the cut in a lot of good decks, but I wouldn't be shocked like, I'd be a little surprised, right? I'd be like, you know, I'd be like 70% surprised, 30% like, ah, I thought so, if a good deck with Helicarrier showed up. I wouldn't be shocked. I'd be a little surprised. Finally, one more relatively major change, that is to Scar. And this is not a text change, it's just a functionality change. They're setting him to how he should have worked in the original place, and that is... Scar is no longer going to get discounted after you play a wave. <laughs> that was how it was working in a lot of Thanos decks. If you had something that would discount Scar and then you played a wave, Scar would cost two. He would start discounting from the wave set for energy instead of from what every other card does, which is not discount that and wave set stuff to four and that's it. So now that that is gone, I think a lot of people who were not necessarily Thanos players are going to be like, oh, this makes Scar worse than Thanos. Would you still play Scar and Thanos without that bug there? And uh, yes, I would. I would still play Scar and Thanos. That bug honestly did not happen that much. It was not a thing that the deck was built around. It was just like a free roll line that you should be aware of. But most of the time when you're playing wave in that deck, it's on turn three in order to ramp out something bigger or on turn four so you can ramp out something bigger and also play a stone. The turn four wave is the most common of those wave plans. It is like, okay, I played a lockjaw, then I go stone into the lockjaw, play a wave, then I go big guy and a stone into the lockjaw. That's the classic Thanos like game plan is like you pull that off and you're just like, ha 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 laughing all the way to the bank, but even when you're not pulling that off, you are a wave on three deck, you are doing things to discount Scar, you are very rarely a wave on five deck, and wave on five is really the only situation where that Scar bug ends up impacting. So I do think that Scar is still going to be good in Thanos, I do think that wave is still going to be good in Thanos, I think this bug being fixed is objectively a great thing, and I don't think it changes anything for whether or not I want to run Scar in the deck. So overall, if I had to stack rank how excited about each of these changes I am, or at least how impactful I think they were going to be, I would say the beast change is easily the most impactful. That is going to be a serious metagame situ uh, situation that will have to be accounted for. And then it is followed by the Omega Red change, which I am excited for. Uh, but a little bit apprehensive, I would say. I expect it to be good, but I don't know if it'll be good enough to be a consistent player. And then we have Helicarrier, which I don't expect to be good, but I want to be good. And finally, the Scar Change, which I don't think changes anything at all for that matchup, for that deck, in any matchup. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Cam Best. You've been phenomenal. I will see you in the next one. Thank you so, so much. Remember, like and subscribe. And let me know what you thought about this patch. I was a little bit surprised that it was so minimal. I know they've been talking about like, we're going to buff Elsa at some point and it isn't in here and it wasn't in the OTA. So I can only assume something is going like legitimately wrong on the back end with that. Like this patch got delayed and Elsa's still not in it. And I just don't understand what's going on there, but I'm just glad the patch is out. Uh, cross his fingers here. And I am very happy that everything happened in this patch, except the beast nerf.